National Training and Development Curriculum for Foster and Adoptive Parents. Foster Care, a Means to Support Families, Christie's Story. Christy was born on a beautiful, sunny day, but the outlook for her life was gloomy from the start. She was the unexpected baby girl of a very young mother and father. The couple already had a five-year-old son they could barely take care of. During the three years prior to Christy's birth, her father had been captive to his drug addiction and managed to spend all of the family's money on his habit. Just two months after his daughter was born, he died of a heroin overdose. Parent death. Finding herself alone and overwhelmed, Christy's mother wasn't sure she could care for a newborn and a five-year-old. Numb with grief and a sense of hopelessness, she slipped into a deep depression, and she was unable to show any kind of love or nurture for either Christy or her brother. A burden to her emotionally unavailable mother, Christy spent most of the day either in her crib or propped up in front of the TV with a bottle. Neglect. In her desperate attempt for emotional connection and a sense of belonging, Christy's mother remarried just before Christy turned three. At first, the new stepfather seemed promising as a husband and a father, but several months into the marriage, he started to act violently. Violence. Because the stepfather was so rigid and angry, Christy and her brother lived in fear day after day. Although Christy never saw him actually hit her mother, she vividly remembers the crying and the screaming. She and her brother would hide under pillows to try to drown out the sound. This nightmare went on day after day for nearly seven years. Fighting. Christy developed strong survival skills at a very young age. She learned how to become invisible whenever her stepfather was around, until the day everything changed. She was having a tea party with her stuffed animals in the backyard when her stepfather drove up in the family car. As he walked up the driveway toward the yard, Christy could feel his fury. That day she was anything but invisible. The two chairs she had brought outside from the kitchen had given her away, and she became the target of his frustration and rage. This was the first time she remembered getting hit in the face with a closed fist. Physical Assault So I ask you now, do you feel compassion for Christy? Would you allow her to come into your home, and would you open your heart and your family to her? The sleepless nights, the nights she clenched her dolls in fear, hiding under her bed, began to take a toll on Christy. It was difficult to concentrate in school, hard to focus on anything other than trying to stay unnoticed. She knew she didn't fit in with the other children. She was withdrawn. She felt alone even in a room full of people. Social Isolation As the years passed slowly, Christy became reclusive. She spent most of the school day by herself. She neglected her personal hygiene and was painfully aware of her shabby clothing and unkempt appearance. All the things that made her different from the other children. The hardest times were school events and holiday parties. All the other children came in new clothes, with at least one parent in attendance. Christy never had anything new, and no one ever attended on her behalf. Poverty. During the rebellious years of middle school, Christy met an older boy who introduced her to marijuana. He was unlike anyone else and seemed so cool. He had a bad reputation and hung with older kids. This was the first time that somebody at school had ever taken an interest in her. She hadn't realized how hungry she was for a sense of belonging, a chance to fit in. Soon, she was hanging out with him and smoking marijuana before and after school. Drug use. As she got more involved with him and his world, she started experimenting with different drugs. The school faculty labeled her as a problem and treated her as such. She started to skip school more and more and eventually dropped out. 
Now she was free to spend the whole day with her new friends. And after all, these were the only people that had ever accepted her. Negative peer influence. Christy's home life seemed to get worse every day. Her stepfather continued to terrorize and batter her mother. Her mother, in her own attempt at survival, started to drink heavily. The drinking made her even more unavailable to her children. Alcoholism. Christy's older brother joined the army as soon as he could and left Christy feeling abandoned in the midst of this nightmare that they called home. She tried to stay out of the house as much as possible to avoid hearing, seeing, and feeling the wrath of her stepfather. Long-term abuse. So I ask you, do you feel compassion for this child? Would you be willing to open your heart and your home for Christy? Christy stayed out almost every night finding different places to crash. She was strong, but sometimes it seemed unbearable. Unless she was high, Christy seemed unable to escape the loneliness and the emptiness that she felt inside. She was only 16 when she met Rex. He was much older, strong, and seemed to always be in control of everything and everyone around him. She loved having somebody show her attention, make her feel important, and most of all, love her. Rex started off as a nice guy, but not long after they moved in together, he began staying out all night, coming home high and very angry. Cycle of abuse. Christy found out she was pregnant when she was not quite 18. She was afraid to tell Rex. When she finally did tell him, he said the baby wasn't his, called Christy ugly names, and told her to just get rid of it. Christy refused to give up the baby. To her, this baby was her one chance at love. As a result, Rex left her. Christy spent the pregnancy by herself. She had so many questions, but nobody to ask. With Rex gone, she had very little money and no transportation. She tried to set up doctor visits but was never able to make the appointments. As she fell into a deeper depression, she began to self-medicate and return to her drug use. Abandonment and depression. Christie's baby girl came three months early. A neighbor drove her to the hospital but couldn't stay with her. Rex was nowhere to be found. The doctor must have suspected that Christie was using because she and the new baby were both drug tested. When the baby tested positive, hospital staff called the abuse hotline. The next few days remain a blur to Christy. What she does remember, vividly, is her daughter's beautiful face, the tiny hand grasping her finger, and the pure love that washed over her when she held her baby in her arms. But these are only memories. Pregnancy and separation. The grim reality was that the Department of Children and Families removed her daughter at birth and initiated a dependency case against Christy. The Child Protection Agency offered her a case plan and allowed some supervised visitation with her baby. But a great sadness seemed to consume Christy. She had a hard time making it through the day, let alone completing all the tasks on her case plan. She knew the baby needed her, but she needed someone too. Yet once again, she stood alone. Christy, Christy, take your baby. Christy, don't you want to hold your baby? Christy. For more information, visit ntdcportal.org. This video was funded by the Children's Bureau, Administration on Children, Youth, and Families, Administration for Children and Families, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, under grant number 90CO1134.
The contents of this video are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of the Children's Bureau.